How's it going everyone? It's Sam. Bitcoin just fell really quickly and came back up very quickly as well. We actually had a pretty big shakeout that scared some weak hands out of the market. It's actually kind of funny uh, in a way, um, but also not too funny because some people just have not been around long enough to understand what's going on. But we'll go through that, also go through some of the top news in the market. If you don't mind, hit subscribe, turn on the bell notification so you can see future videos just like this. Also, there's some links underneath the video. One is to Margex. You can trade cryptocurrencies using leverage there. You can long the market. You can short the market if you think it's going to go down. You can bet on the U.S. elections now there too. But I talked about in my last video, I think this is a good time to be leverage trading. Now, as always with leverage trading, there's going to be volatility. There's always volatility in the crypto market, so you have to be ready for anything. And something kind of interesting came out today. News. The U.S. government launches an investigation into USDT crypto firm Tether. Now, right when this came out, Bitcoin dropped. Bitcoin dropped very quickly. Let's actually go to the, let's go to the five minute here. We went from 67,300, basically where we are now. We dropped down straight down to 66,000 and then bounced all of that within 20 minutes. Down for 15, up for 10, basically. Now, to the untrained eye, they might see this headline and get really freaked out. It came out here, you know, Tether CEO Paolo Ardiano denies Wall Street Journal's report that the firm is under investigation by the U.S. government. Don't really know why he'd deny that if it was true. But this basically made the market jump right back up. Right? There wasn't too much time there where uh, there was a question about it. Within 10 or 15 minutes, he uh, denied this allegation. Now, I think for the people that have been around this market a while, they realize that this is kind of BS or you know, just very unlikely. Why? Well, a couple different reasons. First of all, keep in mind Tether is one of the biggest buyers of U.S. Treasuries. Now, that does not exempt them from the rules by any means, but they probably want to keep them happy, right? They're in the top 15 for uh, Treasury asset buyers. They also work with the U.S. government consistently, like they have helped with seizures in the past. Uh, DOJ and U.S. Secret Service seized 9 million in Tether. Um, investment fraud disputed by seizure of 5 million in Tether. United States seizes 1.4 million in cryptocurrency linked, and they help them with this. Um, now, in the past, keep in mind, they have come after Tether too. They've been under investigation by the U.S. Department of Justice. Like, this is not a new thing. But it would be quite odd for this to happen so close to the election. I, I mean, they've done this before, and it hasn't really amounted to much. So this kind of freak um, drop in the price of Bitcoin is from panic sellers and liquidations. Another thing to consider is, don't you think if there's some investigation into Tether that would really cause an issue with the crypto market with Bitcoin, don't you think that would get around to Larry Fink, who's been absolutely destroying uh, the market every day, just smash buying, smash buying Bitcoin? Don't you think they'd kind of tell their clients, why don't we just hold off for elections? They could blame it on something else. Why don't we just hold off on elections for a little bit and then we'll buy a little bit more Bitcoin, right? They're forcing behaviors. They've said that before. So don't you think that would be some indication that there's really nothing going on here or even if there is something going on it's not concerning don't you think larry fink knows a little bit before we do now of course maybe he doesn't maybe he doesn't maybe i'm going crazy maybe i give him a little bit too much credit but i have a feeling he would hear about that it's most likely just some kind of some kind of manipulation right wall street journal publishes this article someone leaked the info to them and tried to make a quick buck probably maybe they misheard something Maybe this they misunderstood. Maybe Tether's lying to us. But at the end of the day, this does not change my approach to Bitcoin at all. Right? Like, let's say there is some massive problem with USDT. That's going to be horrible for Bitcoin, to be clear. But an investigation doesn't mean anything. 
Their company is investigated all the time. If you think that the U.S. government already isn't uh, isn't already paying close attention to USDT or investigating them like all the time, in some state uh, or form, you're probably wrong. They're probably always looking into this company because it is a massive company that prints billions and billions of dollars in profit. So they're probably keeping a close eye on it, especially because it is an emerging market. They're probably you know, they're probably even working with the USDT, with CBDCs and stuff like that. Uh, so I would not be surprised um, if that happened at some point, if they did investigate Tether and it came out. But that is not necessarily bad, right? An investigation isn't necessarily bad, even if they find them or something like that. Like, I think we're going to be just fine. Bitcoin, though, benefits from people being greedy, right? Even with USDT even with USDC, right? We've seen it before where there's some issue, there's like a DPEG and people flooded money into Bitcoin. And that's because they want to put it somewhere safe and stable and they think about Bitcoin. Also, Bitcoin is here because of the greed in companies and countries. So I don't think it hurts uh, Bitcoin at the end of the day for these types of companies to be investigated, to be looked at or anything like that. It can just cause some panic fear, some liquidation, some manipulation. But if you've been around for a while, you realize that this is no big dip. Right? We are just at the same point that we were right before this. Um, you know, it would be nice to see us break out of this um, level, like going back up to 70,000 would be beautiful. And I do think we have a very bright future. Watch that video that I published before this. Uh, I'll put it on the end screen where I talk about why I think this is a really good time for Bitcoin investors and why I don't think we're going to have to wait that much longer for another big move. Now, moving on from that, we still have to wait for Microsoft. Uh, they're apparently considering considering buying Bitcoin for their balance sheet. That is actually going to happen the 10th, I believe, the 10th of December. So it will be interesting to see what happens here. Be on the lookout for that. Not much news on that since yesterday. Okay, now I was actually just editing this. I just downloaded it and look what I found. I was wrong. There is an update. I have not seen this confirmed by anyone else, but... From Marty Party, CEO of Blockstream, Adam Back, very famous in the Bitcoin community, and Samson Mao, also very famous, met with Microsoft CEO, Sasha Nadella. Remember, the vote is for the 10th of December for them to look at buying Bitcoin. Now, this doesn't mean that they would buy Bitcoin on the 10th of December, but this is interesting. I mean, the fact is, I said in my last video, if you think they haven't already looked at buying Bitcoin, you're probably crazy, right? They have $75 billion in cash. I'm sure they have a team, if not more than one team, looking at the best place to put this cash for shareholders, right? It's a massive amount of cash available to them. And just the difference, the small difference in some bonds could be hundreds of millions of dollars. So I guarantee you they're actively looking at Bitcoin. Uh, MicroStrategy, Michael Saylor also said, uh, tweeted at Sasha Nadella that he would sit down with him. If he needs to figure out how to buy a bunch of Bitcoin, he will do that. And keep in mind, that sounds crazy, but he did the same thing with Elon Musk. So I don't think this is crazy for them to look at it. I also would not be surprised if these companies, whether it's Microsoft or some other company, waited a while to do that. Why wouldn't they wait until the accounting rules change? Besides the fact that they're buying at a higher price, I think that's what they're likely to do. Still going to be waiting on the inflows for today because they have not been announced yet, but BlackRock's just been buying an insane amount. So uh, be ready for that. MicroStrategy up at $236 right now. I don't know what the premium is. It's quite high, I believe. Um, but the market cap nearing $50 billion. Actually, let's look at this. They are close to the highest point that they've ever been. The only time that they've been higher was for a small time span. It looks like literally maybe two weeks or so uh, back in the dot-com era, back in 2000, when internet companies were just going insane. Now, since then, if you just take out that you know few month period, they were sitting around one to $10 for decades, it seemed like. And then all of a sudden, boom, 236 now. It's a beautiful, beautiful thing. Uh, take a look at the bear market, $14. For MicroStrategy, from the bottom of the bear, they're up 16x or so. 
They've been just going on an insane rally recently as people and as Wall Street realizes that they are able to buy more Bitcoin over time. They're also highly traded. Today, they have huge trading volume. They're the fifth most traded stock in the stock market. That That's pretty crazy that this is happening week after week. I know some people would say, oh, that was the same thing with, micro, uh, with uh, GameStop and AMC, like the haters will say that. But this is different. This company has been rallying for years. <laughs> and yeah, I think they're going to continue to be buying Bitcoin, which is going to continue to buoy the price of Bitcoin. You can see here, they're out trading Meta, uh, AMD, Amazon, TSM, Google, Palantir, only Microsoft, Apple, NVIDIA, and Tesla are trading more. And Tesla is having another good day. Tesla is up at $266. This is my largest stock holding, uh, with the exception, I guess, of some Bitcoin proxies. I have not said that in the past, but I hadn't really thought about that before. But as you can, as you can see, uh, Tesla is up 56% in the last six months. Year to date, up 7%. Last one year, up 25%. So much volatility there. We do look to be very close to some other highs. It looks like we actually hit a new high for the year. But you can see 263, 261, uh, even back here, 261 as well. So this has been a difficult area for us to get past this 262 level. So will be interesting to continue to watch. Uh, let me know your thoughts on all this underneath the video. If you do want to trade crypto, if if you want to put in some longs or some shorts, like this kind of volatility is good for trading, to be clear. So if you want to get in on this, there is a link underneath the video to Margex. Make sure you understand what you're doing. Make sure that if you're getting really aggressive, you have some money on the sidelines to probably double down just in case you do get liquidated. Um, but of course, do your own research. I do have many videos explaining different strategies on leverage trading uh, in general. So check them out on the channel. Thank you so much. Check out my last video here on the end screen uh, where I talk about why I think this is such a good time for Bitcoin and why we don't have to wait much longer to see a big move. Thank you so much. See you in the next one.